a, there's been a lot of research that's come out recently that talks about how um, small uh, LLM models trained on high quality, diverse synthetic data can meet or exceed performance of models like five times their size. So really cool, exciting stuff. There's also some, um, as some of these papers that are kind of mentioned here highlight, uh, there's some other advantages around combating toxicity and, and kind of creating more aligned content since you can control the output of a synthetic model. We can create higher quality examples to train it with and reduce biases or propensities to say things that it shouldn't say and things like that. So really exciting field, hard for people to get started with. Um, so here we're gonna walk through an example of using Gretel's Tab LM uh, to create this yourself. Um, so uh, highlight some of the things that you need to get started here. So access to uh, the Gretel Tab LM model, uh, which you can apply for on our Tab LM page. We'll uh, let users in pretty fast. Um, secondly, got to um, use the Gretel uh, API key. So it's free to use. Um, so go ahead and sign up and grab it here. Last set is domain-specific training data. Um, in this case, we're going to use a really popular LLM training or fine-tuning set uh, called Dolly, which is put together by Databricks. Um, but you can uh, very easily substitute this with your own. All you need is a data set that has input-output examples. So it should be uh, pretty uh, standard for fine-tuning or, or training LLM uh, models. So here, uh, we've got some code we'll walk through really fast, but in install some dependencies. So we're going to use Hugging Face data sets to load our data set, grab a client. Um, as we go through, I'll walk through the code a little bit. You're going to create a Gretel project. So we're going to call it Synthetic Dolly. Um, we're going to load the Databricks uh, data set from, uh, from Hugging Face. So this is the uh, this log that, that connects to it on the Databricks Hugging Face model page. Um, we need to tell the model. So we're going to do some things here to create additional diversity with uh, the prompts. One of the problems is if you issue the same prompt over and over and over again, how do you create, get like meaningfully different results? Uh, one of the papers that we referenced earlier and a technique used across actually almost all these models um, is this idea of extracting certain like interesting keywords from the uh, original prompt. Uh, we'll see an example of this before, below. Um, so find interesting words and then require the LLM um, to include that in its output. And you just keep changing the words, which gives you more diverse results, much better than kind of relay, relying on the kind of randomness of the response. So we're going to simulate that technique. We're also going to do it in a pretty automated way. So instead of kind of choosing those words ourselves, um, we are going to use a technique called TFIDF to search the entire training data set, find out what is statistically interesting about each row, and subsample that set of words to tell us what's interesting. So we'll run through here. Here's everything you really need to change, um, all in kind of one field here. So here's the prompt. Um, this prompt was actually uh, created by going through the different um, papers above um, and then really kind of extracting what seemed like the techniques or the instructions they used to generate the synthetic data. So what we're trying to do is create high quality textbook like data. Um, and uh, we give some instructions here about roughly how long the uh, instructions should be. Uh, we do say that we're adding a new column, which is called selective words. I'll show you guys how we're doing that in a second but require that every word from that to be in the response. And that LMs are pretty good at following this. It doesn't happen every time, but it does typically follow the topic that's requested, uh, which I think achieves the goal that we're looking for, for diversity. Uh, we're saying, so introduce a topic uh, from the example briefly in one to two sentences. Ask a clear question that requires logical thinking or common sense reasoning. So we've seen when we ask LLMs to kind of think in this kind of multi-step process, we get higher quality, kind of easier to understand results and easier to learn from. So we're asking it to kind of follow that pattern. Um, then we ask it to respond to the instruction in a step-by-step -step manner. Once again, including some, including some context or some knowledge from that model and the response that can be useful to train other models. Um, ensure the explanation is textbook quality like with all details. So here we're using a really powerful model to create synthetic training examples we can use to train a much smaller model. Uh, we have nice privacy benefits, nice alignment benefits, and we can learn more from the data as we go. Uh, we have some helper functions that we load up here. Uh, next step, we go through configuring Gretel. So really simple kind of uh, data configuration for Gretel that follows any of the patterns we've used so far. Um, next, we load and clean the data set. Really, all we're doing is removing unnecessary um, um, carriage returns and things like that from the data set and ensuring that it's encoded as ASCII just for the uh, purposes of this example. This is where kind of the meat happens. So in diversify and upsample, what we're doing is following these techniques that were mentioned in the paper to make sure that when we prompt the model to create a synthetic example, we are getting something really interesting back to look at. So we want uh, fundamentally different um, uh, results given the same prompt over and over again. And what we do here um, <clears throat> is we allow you to do a couple things. Num words here specifies how many um, interesting words we want to require from the original prompt to exist in the output. 
um, we give it a new column, the output column, which we're calling selected words, and we're using a technique called uh, term frequency and first document frequency. Essentially, it helps find what is unique or special about one you know, paragraph versus all the other content. Um, so this goes through each row and calculates a, uh, and we're gonna see kind of what happened here. So here we see the first time, we see kind of what the Dolly instructions look like. When did Virgin Australia start operating? Here's some context. The context is copied in, um, in this data set, copied in directly from Wikipedia. So we're not gonna create a synthetic version of that. We are gonna create a synthetic version, hopefully an improved and more diverse version of the instruction and the response. Uh, we see a category for it. We see selected words. Something really cool about Tab LM is we don't have to take this data and structure it into some sort of um, prompt template format to present to the LM in a multi-step process. Uh, Tab LM can just take tabular input and work with it. So uh, we can keep the original training set size and we're adding a new column in here, which is extracting out statistically interesting keywords. If we run this a couple times, it will come up with different words each time, which is really neat when you run this multiple times. If you want to create a larger volume of synthetic data, you can do that very easily. Here you can see what it extracted. These do look like pretty interesting terms. So for this first one, we see airline, Australia, and Virgin. Essentially, we're asking the model um, in the prompt that you saw earlier, it said to include the selected words in the response. So we're saying, when you create your new synthetic instruction and response, I want you to include these three keywords. Um, so going through, uh, we have augmented our training set here with these keywords we wanna see. Now that kind of relatively simple example here, we're just gonna pass it off to Gretel. Um, we're passing in the data set and we're passing in the prompt and we're saying um, go rip to the data set, create a synthetic, as the prompt indicated, a synthetic instruction and synthetic response um, that we can use to create our new synthetic data set. I have a uh, detailed logging turn on here so you can see what's happening, but it uh, loads the first 10 examples uh, for us pretty quickly. And then we get right down to the results. So a lot to read here, but let's go through and look at a couple examples and see what happened. So. Here's the original instruction, here's the context, here's the original response. Um, here's the selected words that we're asking it to include and we're asking it to create something that matches this category. So the original uh, question, when did Virgin Australia start operating? And then here you get a, a relatively nice answer actually, it was generated by a human while working at Databricks. Here's our synthetic um, textbook quality instruction and response. So this actually expands on the question, asks two different questions here. When did Virgin Australia start operating and when was its initial name? So we get some kind of interesting data being added in here as well. Um, in theory, um, that these uh, synthetic instructions are going to be, you know, better formed, more kind of textbook-like responses than the original data. So they can either enhance or replace that original data when you train your model. Um, so you see this uh, happen um, several times. Here's one I really like. This uh, this one, I always thought this was kind of a weird instruction. Uh, Alice's parents have three daughters. What's the name of their third daughter? Um, so it doesn't ever tell you that. And the, the model here picks that up and calls that out, right? So here, uh, improved synthetic instruction response. Who are the parents of Alice and what are the names of their three daughters? Well, here we can see it. Um, and then says that it's not mentioned in the context. So the model actually picked that up, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, other examples, let's go through here and see uh, if we can find uh, another fun one to look at. Why is mobile bad for human? So I think we understand what it's asking, but it's pretty low quality. Um, here we can see the model picked it up on it and created a much better version. What are the negative effects of excessive mobile phone usage on humans? So pretty cool example experiment. Uh, I encourage you all to try this, give it a shot, um, share any feedback from it. You know, we're building with this as well. And hopefully this is a good foundation for your research or a good starting point when you come to train your own models.